Hey, welcome to this overview of intermediate circuitry in Factorio. This will open up many new and effective ways of dealing with special problems inside of the production line. Now before I dive right into the first case, I want to mention that I'm splitting these up so each topic gets its own video. Also, if you're still unfamiliar with the basics, I have a video for that, which I will link in the card right here. Anyway, on to topic number one. Flip-flops and latches. Flip-flops and latches are fundamental building blocks of digital electronic systems and very helpful in Factorio as well, since they introduce a way to store state information and perform action based on such. In simpler words, it enables the circuit creation to take past events like a signal reaching a certain number into consideration. There are quite a few different variants of flip-flops and latches, the one I will be covering today specifically is the SR latch. Anyone who has a background in electronic engineering or was a redstone circuit nerd back in the day just like me probably knows what I'm now going to explain. Anyway, here's the theoretical side first. Our latch consists of two inputs and one output. The inputs are labeled S and R, where each letter stands for set and reset. In a neutral state where both inputs do not receive any stimulation, the output of our latch has also no output either. The next stage is the, as I would call it, activated state. Here only the set labeled input receives a signal of some kind. This results in a generated signal on the output side. Now, while the latch is in this activated state, no input signal variation on the set labeled input side will change the output signal again. I can flick around as long as I want to, but the latch will stay activated no matter what I do. That basically means that our latch has now saved this set label stimulus when it's turned on for the first time. The only way to get rid of our output signal again is by sending a stimulus slash signal to the reset labeled input exclusively. Only in this bespoken scenario will the latch reset to its neutral state again. You could also say that we basically clear the latch's memory while doing so. Now, when you are now thinking, that's all some nifty stuff you got right there, but how exactly does this help me in my daily production, hmm? Then I got multiple answers right here. Practical scenario number one. In this scenario our main focus is the steam engine and the accumulator. I want the steam engine to turn on when the accumulator charge falls under 20% and it should turn off again when the charge levels exceed 90%. Performing such actions cannot be done with just wiring the accumulator to the power switch alone. Your best case scenario with such a setup would lead to the power switch rapidly alternating between on and off where charge levels of the accumulator hover right around this set condition. Small info, this idea has been taken from the wiki. I'll leave the link to it in the description in case you want to read about it again in different words or just copy the nicely provided blueprint string. Anyway, these three combinators are needed to form an actual latch, where the two combinators on the left act as suppliers for the set and reset input signals, and the right combinator is representing our logic and memory. Based on my scenario, I want a set signal to activate when the charge level, here represented through the signal channel A, drops under a value of 20. On the other side, a reset signal should be sent out when this charge level goes over a value of 90. So far so clear, right? Now for the latch part, I want it to activate when the set signal is bigger than the reset signal. This is the most important part to understand since it represents the key factor logic behind it. For better visualization, let's look at each state that the latch can be in. First, the neutral state. We are in this neutral state when the latch has an empty memory and the accumulator charges anywhere above 20%. Here both input combinators do not emit any signal. Neither does the latch emit one. Next up is the activated state, in which the accumulator charge drops below 20%, resulting in a set signal with an associated value of 1. This will then be sent to the latch. The latch will react to bespoken input, send out its own signal, which then stores this activated state persistently. Our last state is the reset state, in which the accumulator charge goes over 90% resulting in a reset value of 1, which then clears out the latch's memory. Since we all know that 1 is not bigger than itself. Here's a different illustration of the same problem, but more on a realistic scale than the wiki example that I just showed. Important fact, the whole factorial magic behind why this works as a state storage is because of a very specific wiring trick that I haven't mentioned yet. See this green wire here? Its purpose is to feed the set signal from the latch's output back to its input. 
essentially infinitely repeating the cycle until something interrupts it. This specific construction is also better known as a version of a memory cell. I will get more into detail about memory cells in the future, but that's going to be in a different video, since it's its own topic to talk about, so just take it for granted momentarily. Moving on, here's me and another example, working with a chest which acts as a typical buffer storage. The second sorter on the top sends items towards my gun turrets, defending me from certain impending doom that lurks on the other side of the walls. The other stack inserter sends red ammo towards assemblers that make military signs. Now here comes the problem. It should only turn on when the stored amount inside the chest goes over 500 items, and it should stop again when there is fewer than 50 items left. Yes, I know that making a dedicated assembly line for these would be a much better way to do it, but let's just say for convenience sake and for demonstration purposes that I currently do not have the available space nor the resources to remodel in such a way. Now, circuitry-wise, I could certainly just go with the same three combinator ledge setup again, but what if I told you that there's another way to achieve the same logic with just two combinators? Well, that's exactly what I will be demonstrating with this setup. To do so, I'm placing down one decider combinator and one arithmetic combinator. Wiring-wise, I hook up the inserter, the chest, the input of the decider combinator, and the output of the arithmetic combinator, all with red wire. Additionally, I also connect the decider's output with the arithmetic's input. The internal conditions look as following. Both inserter and decider should activate when the red ammo count is bigger than 500. The arithmetic combinator on the other side should multiply the decider's output signal, which in my case is channel green, by the difference of the maximum threshold minus the minimum threshold, which in my example results to 450, and output this calculated value as the same signal as the item inside the chest is. Sounds confusing? Well, let's first see it in action before I explain, and maybe you'll even figure it out for yourself before I have to say anything. Demonstration in a 3, 2, 1, go! Got it? If so, congratulations! If not, don't worry. Here's what's happening in detail, again split in three states. First, the neutral state. This occurs when the item count of the red ammo is somewhere below or equal to 500. It stays inside of this neutral state until the item count inside of the red network goes over the maximum threshold, that being at least 501 or higher. Here, we transition into our next state, the activated state. Inside of this state, two things are happening at once. First, the inserter starts taking out red ammo from the chest, Second, the decider combinator now outputs a value of 1 instead of its default value 0, resulting in the arithmetic combinator outputting a red ammo signal of 450. When we take a look at the total value of red ammo inside of the red network, we not only see that it is now not matching the chest's content anymore, we also register that the number went up by quite a lot. This is obviously caused by the arithmetic combinator now outputting a, so to say, overhead of a ghost item count. It effectively represents the number of items which should be taken from the chest for reaching the minimum threshold, meaning it basically transforms our inserter and decider conditions from a set functionality to a reset functionality. Both of these will deactivate when the item count inside of the red network, which by the way still consists of the actual amount inside of the chest, ticking down, and our imaginary overhead falls under 500 or lower. When that finally happens, we briefly enter our last state, the reset state. Here, the inserter fully deactivates and the decider stops sending out a signal as well. This then leads to our imaginary overhead disappearing from the red network completely, since the arithmetic combinator now calculates a whopping signal value of zero. When comparing both contraptions in terms of building complexity, this version not only requires less space and combinators to be built, it also doesn't need any type of memory cell to function. Our state information exists here in the form of this before mentioned ghost item overhead. Hopefully it's now a bit clearer how the mechanism works and why exactly it is also considered to be a latch, just like the first example. Small notice, the second version of the SR latch also has its own entry on the wiki, again talking over its overall functionality and illustrating such with a fluid example. 
Displayed example is very handy for handling automated processing of heavy and light oil in a base that utilizes the advanced oil processing recipe. Here for example is my latest iteration of this mechanism in one of my recent survival worlds. You can find the link to the article in the description. And with that I'm done talking for now. I wish happy engineering with the newly acquired knowledge and remember when walking over rails to always watch out for incoming trains.